I'm Jamie Dempsey, and I'm on a journey to Batanas, one of the most beautiful provinces of the Philippines. There, I hope to experience the unique culture of the Ivatan tribe, a people whose origins are still shrouded in mystery. Getting there means a journey of over 1,500 kilometers, over mountains, across the waves, and through the skies. On this leg of my journey, I'm winding through the island of Mindanao and finding myself battling through some crazy whitewash, snorkeling through creepy-sounding sanctuary, and trying out some suspicious seafood. Because the Philippines is still a largely cash-based society, I need to make a quick stop at an ATM before heading out on my long ride up north. It's time to say adios, Davao. Hello, open road. I've been told that the best road to take when heading north is the Buda Highway. This favorite of local bikers winds north from Davao all the way up to Bukidnon, giving the road its shortened name, Buda. I'm a couple hours outside of Davao now, and I've decided to take a quick pit stop in Marilog to feel this breeze and take in the view. Hi! What do you have? What are these? Oh, they're so beautiful. These women and children are part of an indigenous, non-Muslim minority called Lumad, who mostly reside in the southern part of Mindanao. What's your favorite? You like these? These particular women sell bracelets and anklets, which they hand weave from dried vines and leaves, a skill which they have passed on from generation to generation. I can't go anywhere without taking a little something home for my friends and family. And I always like to buy handmade crafts from the people that I meet along the road. Okay, everybody say hello. Hi. <laughs> They say that the roads in Mindanao are great for bikers, and they have not disappointed. There's been some nice curves, beautiful scenery, and the temperature in some places is nice and cool. These are the roads that riders seek out, and I can really find my zen here. And honestly, that is the reason I'm here, to soak up every little bit of this experience. And the only thing you can't see is the massive grin I have under my helmet every time I'm riding. <laughs> Get all emotional. <laughs> yeah. I just love the way I feel when I'm riding, and it just tears me up to feel how lucky I am to be here. <laughs> Tectonic activity and volcanic eruptions have given Mindanao a rugged, mountainous interior, and the Buda Highway kind of has to cope with that. This part of the road is called the Snake Road, for obvious reasons. After nearly five hours of riding, I arrive at the outskirts of the small town of Manola Fortage. There, I find a monument kind of in the middle of nowhere. So I decide to meet one of the locals, Sergeant Onahan, to find out more. Very nice to meet you. It's an honor. Sergeant Onahan is one of the few living veterans who served during World War II. And this shrine is a testament to his company's bravery waging guerrilla warfare against the Japanese. This shrine is erected in their memory and those of the many unknown guerrilla fighters, a tribute to their gallantry, valor, and supreme sacrifice in defense of the motherland. Beautiful. It turns out that this shrine honors 24 Filipino soldiers who during World War II ambushed nine truckloads of Japanese soldiers, killing 90. Manolo Fortich is home to many veterans, and one of the 24 is Sergeant Onahan himself. I couldn't pass up the opportunity to meet this hero who back home in America 
would be part of what is known as the greatest generation that has ever lived. You know, in the first time we, we started the guerrilla, 32 of us were about to attack the garrison of the Japanese. The enemies are so aggressive. And while we were about to withdraw, the, my assistant gunner was uh, carrying machine gun. He was, he was hit at the uh, neck and uh, uh, came out from the shell. Oh my God. I, Yes, the urine is uh, used to uh, treat the one. Really? I, I don't, I don't know why. But, uh, That's that, uh, strange. Uh, because we didn't have any medicine at the time. You have to be resourceful. Yeah, yeah so no medicine was uh, uh, treated on him, but he got well. He survived. Yes, sur yeah, survived. I never so, thought so, I'd get to exchange war stories with a 95-year-old veteran. Uh, it's just such an honor to sit with you, um, and I just want to thank you for everything you've done for your country. Yes, uh, thank you also for coming and uh, trying to interview me. And my These are the moments that make you realize that freedom we often take for granted Four, comes at a steep price. Two, one. A price paid by gentle souls like Sergeant Onahan and countless others who have sacrificed their lives for their country. This inspires me now to head all the way to Surigao City to check out the site of the largest naval battle of World War II. That would also give me a chance to pass through Kage and Oro to meet with an old friend and go on another epic adventure. When you say Bukit Nan, people imagine farms, plantations, and vast tracts of land as far as the eye can see. Most popular of these is the Del Monte Plantation, which spans an expansive 9,000 hectares of nothing but pineapple fruit. Three guesses what I'm getting for dessert tonight. After riding through the endless pineapple fields of Bukit Nan, I'm finally in Cagayan de Oro, the gateway city to northern Mindanao. Its name literally translates to River of Gold, which is not surprising once you take in the breathtaking sight of the powerful river that sits right beside the metropolis. That's why it's perfect that my old friend Mickey is in town. I get to drag her off to do something crazy for once. You been? I'm great. Here I am, back in the Philippines again. Well, yeah, we're very excited to go whitewater rafting with Have you. Have you ever been before? Well, not yet. Don't worry, I've been before. It's going to be really fun. You might get a little bit wet, but right. I promise you won't fall out. All right, I'll let you lead us then. <laughs> Here we are, let's go. Is this another one of those bikes? Yeah, this one is called Bike by Yuki. By Nihon. So it's perfect for carrying our wraps and it's very comfortable, nice and cool in here. I love it. So Mickey, last time I saw you in Manila, but now we're in Mindanao. How did you get here? Well, we drove all the way from Metro Manila to get to Mindanao. How long did it take you? Uh, it was around four days to get here. Four days? Four days. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's pretty much what it took me to get here as well on my bike. Oh, cool. At least it, it, it made me very confident in the and it shows that, you know, it can take the long haul in the right And you were pretty comfortable in here. Yeah, it was very good. Cagayan River is considered as the Rio Grande of the Philippines. Spanning an impressive 505 kilometers, it is the longest river in the country and the reason why tourists flock here every year to try their hand at whitewater rafting. While the guys unload the gear, it finally begins to dawn on me. We're about to go down a raging river on a teeny, tiny piece of rubber. And if we fall, we'll most likely smash against piles of humongous rocks and be dragged away by the unforgiving current, never to be seen again. Eh, no biggie. Hey, girls, ladies, let's wear the safety gear spurt. Suited up. All the gear. I love gear. I feel buoyant. I 
love any activity that involves helmets. Paddles. You look good, Mickey. Thank you. Very official. Okay, good afternoon, ladies. Hello. I'm Kumar. I'm one of your guides. And welcome to the Korean River. Are you excited? Very excited. Super excited. <laughs> All right. at the end point, and we managed to make it in one piece. You know what? Scratch that. Any semblance of safety precaution has been tossed out in the water in lieu of sheer, unadulterated fun. These guys are crazy, and I'm loving every single second of it. They call it the rodeo ride, and that's exactly what we got bucked off. <laughs> bucked in, I should say. Yes, but that was an experience. <laughs> well, that was certainly an adventure. But now it's time for me to get back on the road. See ya! I'm now making my way up north to the port of Balignan, a three-hour ride from CDO. From there, I hop on a roro for an hour-long journey to the island of Camiguian. As we wait for the boat to load, a few local kids decide to give us a bit of entertainment. In America, we have curated parks and action-packed amusement rides. In the islands, this is their playground. That looks refreshing. I want to jump too. One of the things I love about the Philippines is the people's ability to find joy in everything. As I make my way through the beautiful and often misunderstood island of Mindanao, I notice how easy it is for folks to smile and laugh and embrace life with contentment. That trait is apparent more than ever in the sleepy, rural island of Camiguian. It is the second smallest province in the Philippines and dubbed as the island born of fire because of its seven towering volcanoes. A fairly recent explosion in 1951 caused widespread damage. Thankfully, these days, all you see in Camiguian is lush vegetation, beautiful beaches, and gorgeous mountains. My friend was right. The views from this road are spectacular. Look at this. It's amazing. I'm loving riding down this coastal road. And this is a perfect place to stop and take it in. is one giant cross. I don't know what it's doing there, and I'm wondering if you can swim out there. I'd like to try. 
Hello, good morning, Mom. Hi, good morning. I'm Jamie. I'm Carl. Hey, nice to meet you. Welcome to the Sunken Cemetery. Sunken Cemetery? Yeah. Does that mean under the water there's a cemetery? Mm, yeah. During the Spanish colonials, this is a cemetery before. So in May 13, 1871, when the volcanic eruption happens, the whole um, cemetery sank down. I actually think it'd be kind of cool to swim over the cemetery. So I think it'll be a beautiful experience. I thought I would see a garden of gravestones and skulls. But the entire cemetery has been covered by coral. The only thing that's left is a massive steel cross. Somewhere. Oh look, a snake. Wait, what? Give me your hand. There's a snake. There's a freaking snake in the water. <laughs> so of course I ran out. <laughs> They've assured me the snake is gone. So it's time to get back in the water and find that sunken cross. At last, we found the giant cross. I thought it was going to be small, but it's huge. While everything else is covered with coral, the original steel cross remains mysteriously untouched. It can easily be seen when the tide is low. Whew, that's an exhausting swim. It's amazing. One thing they didn't tell me to look out for, though, was <laughs> were those snakes. They're bright and colorful. You can't miss them. And I spotted two. Freaked out a little bit. <laughs> but they're really beautiful. That was such an awesome experience. <sighs> so how was your snuggling under the water? I've never seen so many fish. It was amazing. I told you before, this is a 15-year sanctuary. You will see many beautiful corals under the water. Yeah, it was great, beautiful. Any other places you recommend I should go? Um, you should go to the White Island. We have a white sand there. A little bit precaution now. Don't go before night, because the island will disappear. Disappear? Why will it disappear? Uh, because of the current. Um, the current will go high tide. Oh, so the high tide will cover the island. Yeah. Well, I better get a move on, because I don't want to miss this. and heading to White Island, which is actually a sandbar that disappears when the tide is high. Hopefully, I'm not too late. Super windy. Stay. Stay. <laughs> Boom. Ta da! Excuse me, mom. Sea urchin. What? Sea urchin? Aren't those poisonous? <laughs> you want me to hold it? Yeah. Sure. Uh, aren't these? No, no. Don't touch those. It's okay. It's okay? I like this. Like this? I'm holding in my hand a sea urchin, and it's still alive. You can see its spiky bits moving, which I didn't even know that they moved. Next thing I knew, he was already cracking one open. Ooh. Wait, hold on, Manon. I still need to mentally prepare myself. Ooh, I'm usually really scared of these because when you step on these in the ocean, it's really painful. It looks slimy on the inside. And you're supposed to eat these? Yeah, with vinegar. With vinegar? Yes. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, you, I mean, it. I'm here. I got to try it, right? Try it. So what part do you eat? The yellow one. The yellow part. Oh, I see it. OK. 
<laughs> this is really appetizing. <laughs> A little bit of vinegar. <laughs> Every time I travel, I always eat something weird. All right, here goes nothing. I'll get this. Oh, it's good. The vinegar is a nice touch. <laughs> it's a little bit soft. It doesn't take, taste fishy at all. It's pretty good, I like it. This is so cool. Just sitting on the beach, sucking on some sea urchins <laughs> right out of the ocean. And this is a delicacy, an ugly one. <laughs> Local harvesters gather and sell these not just to day trippers on the island, but to the rest of the province. One man even swore that he was able to send his children to college on these sea urchins alone. Not satisfied with just cracking them open and eating their insides while they're still wriggling, I decided to give harvesting a go. Oh wow, look how pretty. They're so beautiful. And these are sea urchins too? Yeah, this is sea urchin. I've never had anything like this before. So cool. Well, I've had a really nice and surprisingly delicious time on White Island, but it's time for me to go before the whole thing disappears. Where's my bunka? Hello? Anyone? Get me off this island before I can't go anywhere. <laughs>